gamers all around the world. Today, we are looking through a little uh, little game that I just had. We're gonna do a little get good with Beastie. I'm gonna be talking about mirror matches. This one specifically is French vs French, but mirror matches, uh, how to come back, how to decipher what you gotta do in the game if you're behind. And this game looked really, really grim for me but somehow I managed to come back. I think I know what this guy did. I thought that was really interesting, which is basically he skipped on knights past the second TC and he just went super fast castle. So that's something that I might be taking up for myself in the future. So the map is high view. Um, standard opener from both, nothing weird, nothing crazy. Um, I should probably stop making houses like this, but I don't want to walk there because it, like, slows down everything. I want to be as efficient as possible. But what he does is probably a bit better. Look at that smoke. Amazing. So the start is pretty usual. Eight villagers on uh, food from each, four on gold, and then wood line. And then we both go for a uh, school of cavalry. I go with four. He went with three. Okay. So my knight will be the first one out because I'm aging up with four and I'll be able to do some harassment. Now, whenever you play mirror matches, doesn't matter what mirror matchup it is. Oh my god, the scouts are just screaming all the time. Uh, whichever matchup you're playing, as long as it's a mirror match, any villager you lose is a huge loss because you're working with the same economy, same civ bonuses, and same units. So it's... Uh, other matchups, obviously losing villagers is not good, but if you lose villagers, you know, you can come back through French Knights, through Nest of Bees, but if it's a mirror match, that doesn't really apply. Like, you, you have to uh, do something with the same, uh, basically, unit types, except they'll probably have more because they have better economy. So, here we both go for second uh, TC. He went a little bit of a different route. His TC was delayed, I'm not sure why. Um, I think he might have mined enough gold for three knights. Let's see. Yeah, he mined enough gold for three knights and I stopped at two. So that was the that was the difference in our build, I guess. Um, so with his first knight, you always wanna, in French or French mirror, or in any matchup with French, you always want to send the first knight across the map because especially if you're aging up with four villagers which is the most optimal uh, way to age up especially if you play aggressive sim uh you want to run your first knight across the map instantly like one mistake that i see sometimes people do is they take the first knight and defend the scout or something um so you don't want that you just go straight across the map and you want to try and do damage to the opponent because timing is everything, especially with French Knights, and the faster you get there, the higher chance you're going to do some damage. So here I see none on gold. So even if I didn't scout now that uh, there's a stone here, let's say the stone was here, I would know he's going for an expand because he's not mining gold anymore. Um, another, another tip I can give you is here I go in and I send my scout first on purpose. So if my knight charges and his knight charges... Um, I don't know if you guys know, but the way that knight charge works is if he, char if he clicks on my knight, right clicks, if I put a unit in front, it will actually hit the unit and it, not, it, it will not hit my knight. So this is something that you might have also seen me do when I grab relics, whenever uh, in other matchups with HR for example, whenever I grab a relic, I put the, knight, I put the scout between the prelate and uh, the knight so that the scout absorbs the, uh, the charge. But here he didn't move at all, so kind of didn't matter, but just want to explain why that is. Um, second knight, I'm using it to defend because his knight also arrived. Uh, he actually killed my scout here. So I'm just chilling right now, chasing his scout. And behind this, we both go barracks. And like I said, my, my expand was a bit faster. And I think it's due to the, the gold difference. That he mined. He mined an extra 100 gold, which is, you know, I have a 100 stone more, as you can see. I have 225, he has 135. So, that's something that always happens. and something that um, a lot of people, I feel like, don't consider. Like, if you went for two knights and you went for four, 
that means that he has invested more resources into it so something else will be delayed right and that's something to uh to pay attention this is for like any matchup like um it doesn't matter which matchup it is but whenever opponent is investing into something he's lacking you know resources into something else whether it's unit production or tech or whatever else so here he rinses two of my i think this was kind of bad uh he kills two of my spearmen and then kills another scout and a villager here on the other side i did some raiding as well not very successful as you can see and one thing too uh that's important also is you can kind of notice uh where your opponents will be building a second tc based on their spawn and the easiest way to do this is whenever you're playing a game in aoe4 and you know your opponent is going to want to go for an expand just ask yourself if you were in his position where would you build a second tc right and that way you can keep your knight on that side and you can intercept the uh, TC building. So for example, his second deer pack is here in the corner. Like he's not going to go there because it's too far away. Like you don't want to build TC like all the way there because it's, you know, it's, it's pretty out there. Uh, you don't want to build TC on your berries. You don't want to build TC on your woodlands because you want to secure a food source with it. And building TC on berries is okay, but you know, not perfect. You want it on deer. So, that's why I kept my knight here on this side and once he went with the villagers to build it I managed to delay it a little bit and you know all those things kind of add up um, meanwhile on the other side uh, I didn't want to build my TC again in the corner on one of these deer patches because I figured if I just put a wall here I'll get both deer patches for free so um, hmm, I did something stupid later I walled off here I could have just walled off this side and be a full wall, but yeah. Uh, so what I did instead is, this is also popular against French players quite a bit, where if you can, you can put your second TC between food source and between gold. So this way your gold is covered. Because gold is very important resource in French versus French mirrors, uh, because the opponent can produce knights if you block that. All right. So, um, yeah, he gets his TC here. Uh, if I was him, to be honest, I wouldn't have put TC there. I would have put TC on the board and like right here, the TC would be in a way better position because that TC would protect Sacred Site. He would get bored. He wouldn't need to do this right now. It would protect this whole side so he doesn't need to build a wall. And then if you build a wall here and here, he has that side fully walled off. And by putting TC here, he could have secured deer and the bears in the back and everything um, along with it. Isn't that TC unprotected? Well, that TC is only unprotected if you make no units. Uh, but you're supposed to... Oh, he lost the knight to boar. Uh, you're supposed to constantly make units uh, in Age of Empires 4 unless you're rushing castle because you want to contest food um, on the map. That is your priority. Because if the opponent has no food, they can't age up and they can't produce units. So, yeah. But, uh, workers are dead even. Even after me losing villagers and him losing villagers, workers dead even. Uh, but I do feel like his position right now is way better. And I definitely felt uh, not in a great, great spot. So this is the wall I was talking about. This wall should have been here. Because then I would defend this deer and these deer and this gold and this stone. So that was a little bit of a mistake for me. And he gets the boar, which is quite massive because it's 2,000 food. Like that's insane amount of food that he's getting right now. So what happens from here on out is I don't... It, it was very uh, unique French versus French match that I've had. And I haven't had one of these in a while. I've, I committed to double stable, double barracks, and instead he went one barracks for now. I know he had a barracks uh, extra a little bit later, I just don't know when exactly. And I kept massing units. The problem was I can't really push anywhere except deny resources, and I kept losing a knight here and there. And because I went two stables and he went one, he was able to get his castle much, much quicker. 
And that's when I was in a lot of trouble. Like, this gives him so much food income right now. Like, look at this. Oof. That is rough. He has double food income right now. That's crazy. So I kill another villager too. And yeah, he's just producing knights of a one stable. That's why he was able to get it like that. And another thing that I did is maybe it's overdoing it. But I had like three knights solo running around. Um, and what he had is like three, four, five knights running together. And I'm not sure which one is better, but... Yeah. So... This tower right here, by the way, is really, really annoying in any matchup, but especially French vs. French, because you don't go early rams. Um, because it's a mirror. We work with the same unit, so if I do a ram push, that means... Because I invested into Rem, he will have more units to fight with, right? So, this tower that he got here is super, super annoying because it gives him so much vision. If you look. Wait, what? Oh, there we go. It gives him a lot of vision all on the middle and it protects the boar and it gives him the extra resources. So, Anytime in any matchup, if you can get a tower on the middle of the map, especially if it's some map where it's kind of linear, like you kind of go straight through the middle to get to your opponent, getting a tower in the middle and just upgrading it once, you don't need to build any walls, just giving you vision is really, really good. And it will most likely make your opponents not wanting to uh, fight there. The same way I didn't. Like, I never tried to. Uh, this might is. Oh, I tried, okay. I was like, did I let that go in? Um, but you don't want to fight under this, because if the five villagers go inside, it's going to be doing quite a bit of damage, especially if you got spears. So this is the point where he aged up, and I was nowhere close to aging up. So, um, part of the reason for that is this boar that has way higher collection rate than anything else in the, than like deer or sheep or, or berries. But another part of it is, I wish I can see how many knights he has. He has five knights. I have no idea where mine are, but I've been constantly harassing, so I might have also lost them. Uh, oh yeah. Um, so because he went one stable, Instead of spending that much uh, gold and, and food on knights, he kind of managed to get castle quite a bit faster than I did. And together with the boar, uh, allowed him to quickly, quickly get there. Now, this is the biggest issue. And this is a, an age-old question. And this is a, another thing that's not so much big of a problem in other matchups as much as it, as it is in mirror matchups. So there are some matchups where opponent will get faster castle than you. For example, uh, Abbasid versus HRE. Abbasid will never get faster castle than HRE player. Like, HRE will, unless something goes severely wrong, uh, HRE will always get faster castle. And usually that's not a problem uh, because um, you have horsemen and you have camel archers that deal pretty good damage. So it's the same thing if you play French versus HRE, it's not an issue if HRE gets castle first because you have knights, right? And, you know, you can still deal with castle units with knights, not a one-to-one -one ratio, but you can still beat them. Now, in mirror matchups, getting faster castle is insane advantage. And again, it goes down to what I was talking about earlier. Why is it an insane advantage? It's because you arrive into castle and you're most likely, because it's a mirror, you're fighting with same units. So you're gonna see that here. He arrives into castle first, and then he upgrades spearmen and, and knights, and then he has castle knights, castle spearmen, and I'm still working with these potato, uh, potato spearmen. So this is a really, really bad situation. And there's definitely like a timing for him to do something and to force fights before I get to castle and make the game more even. So right now, I have three army supply more, which is not really a lot. 
And you can see he's already kind of preparing, like he's putting units in the front. Uh, you know, he can because there's not much I can do about it. He's, oh, he's actually, he has both, I didn't even realize this during the game, both of the rich gold veins are on his side of the map. So if this game went longer, uh, it would have been maybe a problem for me. So he keeps poking here and fighting and uh, this is where the issues start. The knights go through, my spearmen uh, sleeping on the job. And then look at that, I aim move and they just, yeah. So this just starts being terrible, terrible damage for me. Luckily, I had some knights around the map. And whenever you're behind, whether it's, you know, you know you're going to get pushed and, you know, attacked and whatever. Um, most people's logic is pull all your units back and defend, right? Because if you're getting attacked, logic says that you should pull all your units back and try to defend that. But actually what you should do, almost always, like in 95% in of situations, is actually counterattack. Not with all your units, but with some units. Because what that does is you put an opponent, what I like to call in an all-in situation. But it's not really full all-in, but you're putting him in a situation where... Let's say all his units are here. Like he's rallying them as he is. If you do a raid in the backside, he has a choice. Do I go back? Or do I keep attacking and hopefully reinforcements deal with it like what is my option and i feel like at this point like this exact moment where i'm doing damage to the villagers whichever point uh, you know option he chooses he will take damage so if he goes back now i get to um get to castle i'm, I'm almost there i think i'll buy uh, some food in a bit and i'll get to castle if he keeps attacking, then he's putting himself in a very dangerous position where if these knights aren't dealt with, they're going to just keep killing villagers. So technically, he's ahead right now. So logically, it would make sense for him to defend this, right? Not take damage because he is ahead. But if he does that, then I get to castle and make the game even once again. So he chooses to uh, just send reinforcements to deal with this. And he just lost two workers. So it was 70 workers against 78 plus he has castle. So a pretty a pretty decent oh, advantage, yes, right? I have a knight here as well. That's just chilling doing nothing. He keeps harassing my villagers, he's harassing the front. And now veteran spearman upgrade finish, and each spearman uh, has Two more damage because of the blacksmith upgrade and getting plus one damage and each spearman has 20 more health which facing spearman versus spearman is uh not a good trade for me so here i'm trying to do some damage and this is where things start going rough for him idle time because you're making your opponent multitask i also forgot about these knights so uh <clears throat> not the, you know not the cleanest game for me but again, doing some harassment, and not only did I see that, uh, not only I'm getting damage, I knew that he's gonna throw a keep on the middle of the map, if not forward keep, because he's mining a stone with like 10-15 workers, and at this point he's not gonna make more TCs. So this basically told me, okay, he's gonna make a forward keep, and I kinda need to be ready for that. Um, so it's kinda like you getting the scouting and you're getting the damage done as well. I also saw, uh, I think it, I think I already saw it if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I already saw the farms and I knew that he was transitioning to farming, which means that A, he's either running out of food or he doesn't want to collect these food sources, uh, which I had a knight here, so I knew that he's not getting this. So this will slow down his economy a little bit. I'm transitioning to farms meanwhile and this is the part where, like I said, he has castle upgrades on all these units, he's pushing, but he's kind of putting himself in a situation where, you know, he lost some workers, um, his plan got revealed, and he didn't really do anything with this push. Like, he could have done something different, um, either fully committed with, like, rams or something, or did, like, a keep drop right here, but he kind of went uh, middle of the way. 
And another thing that he could have done better is gotten the relics. Whenever you have a big advantage over your opponent in getting to castle, you should always try to get the relics. Like, it doesn't matter what civ you are, doesn't matter what matchup you are, it is. If you have the map control and if you have a faster age up, or even if you just have a, a, a map control and then later age up, you should always try and get the relics because it is crap ton of uh, gold per minute. Because one thing people forget is not only relics give you gold per minute, which is basically giving you villagers, but it's also giving you supply. So if you're two, 200 supply, the relics also give you, you know, 210 to 15 supply because you have those extra villagers doing work. Or villagers, extra relics. Um, so yeah, here as you can see, I'm just playing passive. Uh, I got the boar here, but he quickly uh, denied it. This night chilling. This game was super, super messy, by the way. Like, he kept attacking me everywhere. And this is the point where I had to move my villagers so much. Like, I was just getting food here. Then I had to run upwards. I bought into castle. Then I finally get gold here. Because my other gold option is the forward one, which I didn't want to get. And then this, there's this one that's also kind of forward. So I went for the bottom one, and then he insta the moment I arrived. I got 344 gold. He insta attacked, so I had to run all the way back, which is a lot of uh, mining time that's lost. And right now he's ahead eight villagers, which again in a mirror is quite a bit. So there's the keep, uh, as predicted. So what I do, I'm taking damage everywhere. I don't keep my army back. I don't try to defend. I use the slow spearman to defend. I go for a counterattack with my knights. And I think this is when I realize... Or maybe it's even later. Dude, I forgot about these knights for the longest time ever, by the way. Like, longest, longest time ever. And maybe it's copium, but I think it's because I'm yellow. And if you look on the minimap, it's not that easy to spot. Like, look at this knight in the corner over here. Look at the minimap. Like, it's very hard to see it, you know? So maybe I shouldn't be picking yellow anymore. Another tip, don't pick green, because then you can't see berry bushes. That's another thing I found out. I played a game a couple of days ago where I couldn't find a berry bush, and I realized the reason I couldn't find it because I had five units on top of it. So on the minimap, I saw green as in my units and not the berry bush. So, um... So again here, uh, I send my knights for a counterattack. Meanwhile, the whole time, by the way, I'm running from wood lines to gold uh, to here with the knights, distracting him and buying myself more and more time. And he is preparing for a full-on uh, push through the middle. Situation is still looking grim. Uh, Ten workers behind right now, I am. And he's going to kill some more here. But there are a couple of moves that I make very, very soon that turn this game around in a quite an extreme way. I'm 23 supply behind right now. And the reason I have more units is because he invested into keep. Oh my god, why are they screaming so much? He invested into keep, he invested into monastery, he's mining more stone because he wants to throw down more keeps. But meanwhile, the only thing I've done is... Um, I've been very focused on just producing units and producing a crap ton of spearmen. I have 29 spearmen because they're cheap and they'll tank and fight against anything at this point. Then I didn't really have economy for much else. So again, a knight raid here, killing some villagers, forced some idle time. And I have eight knights AFK in here. He gets a trap out and this is when I thought I was in a terrible, terrible position. When voila, miracle happens. I see the knights. I'm like, oh yeah, I got the knights. That is true. This knight, by the way, rinses through my eco. You'll see in a bit. So, I noted his army. He had some spearmen here, right? Because he was defending these raids. He had some spearmen there because he was defending the woodlands earlier. I sent some villagers here to get this food because he wasn't. And I see that his army is in the middle and is preparing for a siege push along with the keep. 
So I knew that his economy, a lot of his economy stationed here, so I just go for the raid, and this is where shit goes south real, real quick for him. You can see just villagers mowing, getting mowed down. Only seven inside, but even if he puts three more, that is not enough space for all the villagers. And this is what I was talking about, but to a, a higher extreme kind of situation where he has a choice, does he move back or does he stay? So what I did is... Um, did I kill that trip? I think I might have. So what I did is the moment I started raiding, I A moved my units in the front, not only because he's distracted back in the base, but if he does send the units back, I can kill the trebuchet. And I think I actually did kill the trebuchet here. Uh, so now he's getting raided. He's losing villagers. He's forced to go back. And he's doing all the right moves. And this is why raiding in AoE 4 is so important. And this one villager killing 10 of my villagers also proves that point. Um, and suddenly if you look at the worker count, it's 99 versus 70. So now this swing is massive, 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 massive swing. And when I did this raid, I was like, okay, boys, we're back into it. Obviously, you don't exactly know how far behind or ahead you are, right? You can only do a, an estimate. But after killing all those villagers, I was like, okay, we, we got a chance. Especially because if he didn't have an army to defend, and his army on the front was this, that means that he has no army. Like, that's it. There's no more army for him to be to be had, right? Because if he had more army, he would either be attacking hard on the, on the front, or he would have enough to defend, but he didn't have either. So I felt pretty good about that. I have uh, 11 army more, but if you look, he can't really push into this, right? And this is why raiding is so powerful. And why raiding with a keep is so good because a keep allows you to not be able for your opponent to not be able to push through you can buy a lot of time with keep whether with repairs or forcing trebuchets from your opponent and then you can just springle and then he needs to be built springles so all that like waiting for trebuchet waiting for his own springles is delaying the push a lot and meanwhile you can just do a bunch of raids and if it like the thing about raiding is you know, you might fail here and there, but eventually your knights will get in and or... Uh, well, every Civ has Lancers and Knights in Castle. And then you're going to do a crap ton of damage. Now, what he could have done better is obviously place walls, right? He could have walled off here. He could have walled off there. But if he did that, then maybe he wouldn't have a trebuchet as early. And then I could have just broken the walls anyway. Um... It would give him an earlier warning, but it, it's not a kind of like a safety measure where it's it's 100%. But walls for him would have definitely, definitely helped. So right now I'm trapping his keep and I'm going to get some sprinkles. I got two siege workshops and then I just continue to raid more and more with these knights. Has some spearmen here for pegging and another thing is i went guild hall um and the reason for that is you want to go for the institute in french for strange mirror royal institute like 90 percent of the times but i would say if you feel like you're pretty far behind or your opponent has massive spear count already you might want to go guild hall but i like going guild hall when i'm behind because if you again it's a mirror so if he has 20 knights and you have 15 and you both go Royal Institute, I'm going to lose, right? Because he has more knights. But if you go Guild Hall and then go Spearman Crossbows and use a couple of knights to raid, then you're kind of making a different matchup, right? You don't want to do the same thing your opponent's doing if you're behind. You need to do something else in order to come back. So this is why raiding is so important because it allows you to kind of play a different game or a different matchup and force different kinds of fights like you can use spearman crossbow to force your main fights and then uh or just pure spearman or whatever you want and then you can use your knights to raid so that's why i didn't go roll into this game i went for guild hall um and right now what i'm doing is i think i or i'm about to get uh stone from the guild hall 
and then I'm going to plop down a keep here. We'll see it in a second. <clears throat> So he is focusing on a lot of resources in the middle, namely this gold and the top side. So I knew that he has nothing here because I also had a knight patrolling. So putting a keep here is super, super annoying for him and good because I deny gold stone, another stone and big gold is, is kind of close. So I can just keep put another keep here. So I kind of go behind enemy lines and whenever your opponent is too focused in the middle or trying to kill you, what you can always do is go around and keep or tower his other resources and either force him to not have those resources or you force him to spend some, you know, investment, whether it's trebuchets or rams or melee units to go and destroy those, which, again, is taking away from his main push. So, yeah. In this situation, I pretty much used all my knights to raid. Like, the moment I got a couple of knights, I sent them around to raid. Oh, yeah, look at this. Yummy. Uh, I sent around to raid on both sides. And I just used Mass Spearman. I got two Springles to snipe his traps, which I kept doing throughout the game. And now I am going another trap to push this keep down finally because he kept repairing it. And I think I go double Mangunal soon and then these crossbows are completely useless because I have Siege Control and he has no Horseman. And even if he did a Horseman, I have Mass Spear, so it doesn't work. Uh, so this is where he goes a little too greedy. Like, I know what he's trying to do. He's just not doing it the right way. Uh... He's doing what I like to do quite a bit, which is to mine out your opponent's resources first or more contested resources and then go back to your own. So he's doing that with this gold, like he's mining out this gold because that's technically my rich gold, even though it's on his side of the map. Nice one. So instead of him mining this gold or going for these golds that he doesn't know I have a keep yet, he goes for the far one that... I am more likely to go for than, you know, one of these, right, that are in his base. And sadly, he runs into knights, so unfortunate brother, but loses a couple of villagers there too. Got another knight here. And what I realized in this game at this point, I was like, okay, he is just rallying everything to the front he's fully committed so i did something i don't usually do but i should do more what i do is i make triple barracks right here you'll see it in a second still rating at the top and now the worker count is 122 versus 91. i have less army now but it doesn't matter because he can't kill this key and if he can't kill this keep, he can't push through. Technically, he can go around, right? But if he goes around, I'll just destroy the keep and all this production. So, he can't go around. He, ha he has to stay in the middle because all his production is in the middle as well. So, here comes the triple barracks. So, my idea behind this was... Uh, I'm stonewalling here as well. My idea behind this was, instead of making more knights and doing runbys on that side, I can just make triple barracks. Put one barracks here, one barracks like there, and one barracks here, and just rally men at arms. Because that's gonna be super, super annoying for him to, uh... It's gonna be super, super annoying for him to deal with. Uh, and it's basically doing the same job as knights, right? It's, it's doing the raiding, and it's distracting opponent. He goes for a push here, but again, I have so many spearmen to tank. And... Mangonels are firing, firing the crossbows in the back and doing massive, massive damage. Doing the raid on top with all the knights that I had. And look, he's forced to have some... Uh, he, he's forced to move the villages from here. He has two herbal trees in the, in the PC. And you can see, they're rallied at different points. And all I care is to create most chaos possible and just do as much damage as possible. This is something I suggest also to anyone that doesn't have a lot of APM. Uh, what you can do is build barracks on the opposite side of the map or, or stables, like even in the corner, and just put them like rally one into the wood line, one into the farms, one into the goal, and just make units. You don't gotta micro them. They're gonna go there and they're gonna do their job and you're gonna get the value of, off of it. Like, you won't execute it any differently or better, right? Knights keep raiding. At this point, he's not mining gold, so the struggle is real. 
And not to mention, by the way, I have Guildhall, which is going to get more and more value over time. And he has Royal Institute, that the only thing he got is the Knight Charge. Because he's not producing any Knights, right? And he, he didn't even get these upgrades because he has no gold. Because I managed to deny gold quite successfully, although he could have mined in the middle. Um, so his role in the is completely useless. And here come the men at arms, attacking farms, Kirk W. Don't know why he's doing that, but you know, still forcing idle time all the villagers. Men at arm here. Men at, arm, men at arms everywhere. Um, now I just start dropping uh, keeps everywhere, especially around his resources, because why not? And this is the this is the part where he goes back. Um, I can't find his army. Does he have an army? Twenty three. He has some units. There's four spearmen there. Ten spearmen there. Okay. Um, so he stopped rallying units forward, and this is what happens. Like for anyone wondering, like why didn't he just go back? The moment he goes back, the keep instantly dies. And the moment keep dies, then I can push through with all my units and lose all the connection. And GG. So yeah, the most important part that you guys can learn from this game is see how raiding is very very important it can give you like a lot of a lot of combat potential it's probably the best combat potential alongside like demo ship or like manual shots and ranged units and the importance of mixing up your unit comp in mirror matches because again remember if you're playing against a different civilization you should try use your civ bonuses to come back into the game or make something happen but if you're playing a mirror, no matter what Civ you play, if you're behind, you cannot go for same units as your opponent is because you will just lose. You, if you're going 20 Spearmen versus 15, like I said earlier, 20 Knights versus 15, you're not going to win that. You're going to lose. So you got to find a way, whether through differentiating your uh, unit comp or placing keeps offensively or doing something spicy. That's all you got to try to come back into the game. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will most likely be doing season two build order guides for every Civ because, you know, might as well update them and uh, have eight videos for you guys because some Civs change their builds quite a bit. Some are more or less similar. And I used an example of English. English is pretty much the same as it was. So instead of making like a season two build order guide for English, it will be a, you know, a new guide but I will just do a different build for English uh, instead. Anyway, if you're watching YouTube, thank you for watching. If you're watching on Twitch, let's keep gaming.